Hi everyone, Arturo Spricasso here. Welcome back to another Spricasso show. Well, we have a pretty awesome painting to do today, but before we get started, I'd like to remind you guys to please wear your masks. It is very important. I wear my mask all the time, actually, when I spray painting. And what I do is I, we do what we call, you know, movie magic. And uh, I do a voiceover after I'm done with the painting. So I actually have to sit there, watch the whole video again, and then record my voice as we're going. But it's worth it. It's for you guys, right? Uh, safety goggles. Safety goggles, I use them once in a while. And that's depending on how much I've been spray painting. After a while, you get this, this cloud of spray paint. So, you know, it gets on your face, it gets on your eyes. So once in a while, you guys will see me wearing this. They won't prevent me from seeing the painting any different. They're clear. They're see-through. They're not prescriptions. So it doesn't really make a difference. It doesn't really affect me any to wear them. So you'll see me wearing these once in a while. Uh, overalls, well, obviously, you know, if you want to get your, your shirts, your clothes dirty, just zip them up. Make sure you get the appropriate overall, depending on what season you guys are in. This is a winter overall. I'm cooking in here. Man, it is hot, but hey, it's one of the perks, right? I don't want to get dirty. So, <clears throat> well, like I said, we have a pretty awesome show for you guys today. So if you guys are ready, what do you say you grab your masks, grab your spray paints, let's get started. Alright guys, so let's start on our sky layer. So we're going to go ahead and start with the yellow. We'll start on this corner. It's right here. Spray that down a little bit. And then we're going to transition that into an orange. So we'll put our orange down right on top of that yellow. Very lightly, just so you can still see the yellow. And a little bit of red. Okay, now you want to blend that in, make the transition effect. We're going to use brown here at the bottom, just a little bit of brown. This can be either our terrain in the background or plant life in the background. I'm going to go ahead and transition that brown into a darker color, which is black. So there you go guys work on that sky a little bit more. Let's add a little bit more brown. Maybe a little bit more red, just so you can see the transition better. Okay, a little bit of orange. Orange is a great color to combine other colors. Makes a great transition. And our yellow once again. Okay. Now let's concentrate on making the trees in the background. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take another piece of magazine. It's going to tear off a piece. And I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow and orange. Alright, I'm going to put that on the side. I'm going to use the spray castle tool on this one. So I'm going to not only scratch and combine the paints, but as you can see here, I'm going to add some new paints to it, to the mixture. I want the trees to really stand out. So, that's how you make it. Just tap and add a tree. Just like so. And then, so this is what you should have. So then, we're going to go over it. <clears throat> and we're going to scratch at the same time. kind of make the, the bark effect and the way we do that is we're just gonna move up and down see just like so and see that gives you a nice little mixture of all the colors we're gonna do the same thing to the other one just gonna mix the colors together and so see you see a little bit of the white in the background but not too much. Okay, we went ahead and did that throughout our our painting. 
and then we're just gonna add some some tree leaves using the same colors and it doesn't take too much just a little bit of spray paint and just a few dabs see that you don't need you don't need to make it really bright just like so You guys see how I did that? Just by scratching off and mixing the paint at the same time. You don't want to make your trees too white. Uh, that's why it's important to add the background first. Um, kind of mix the colors a little bit so our trees have some of those highlights, uh, the yellow and the orange, and some of that red highlights in there. I just kind of mixed it with this Picasso tool, and then I went over it a few times to make a bark effect. Um, on the tree leaves, we're just going to go ahead and, and tap very lightly throughout there just to make them, very, uh, make them vanish into the background. So you don't have to actually sit there and, and paint every leaf. We'll make it blend into the background. Alright, let's continue. Huh? What do you say? Alright, so let's continue. We'll add a little bit more orange, a little bit of brown. Let's tear off another piece of magazine. Let's begin creating our terrain. All right, just like so. Now, because we're doing this on darker areas, you can't see uh, the brown, so we're going to have to add some, some highlights, some lighter colors to it. So, and all you do is you just add a little bit of orange, maybe a little bit of yellow. And you should be able to see it on the darker colors. See that? Okay. You guys have probably noticed I like to jump around throughout the painting. Uh, I'll start on the tree leaves and then I'll move on to the rocks. And then I'll come back to the tree leaves. Then I'll work on another tree. Well, I just, uh, I find it pretty interesting how the painting works itself. Um, yeah, I do have an idea of what I want the painting to look like. We'll add a little bit of water here with our straight edge. A little bit of white. We'll add some blue on top of that. But, it's one thing to have the idea of what you want your painting to do, to be. Now check this out, guys. We're just going to use our straight edge to mix these colors together. I'm gonna liquefy it. You can use a magazine sheet, but the straight edge works just as well. And like I was saying, it's one thing to get an idea of what you want your painting to look like, but when you start painting it, it usually turns out to be a little bit different than what you do, what you wanted it to be. Now here, since we used the white and the white is it's a brand new can, so it's pretty powerful. You get a lot of over mist. And uh, I'm just adding a few darker spots on our, on our rocks. So hopefully this will show you that even if you mess up, you can always go over it. Go over some of your rocks, maybe even create some new pieces of land that you didn't have planned. I was going to make a tutorial that showed, you know, some some typical errors where uh, people would mess up and how to fix them. And I think this one would be a pretty good one. As I I'm going to go ahead and create another rock right here. As you guys saw how I created a piece of land and I used the white and by accident it covered made it wider, made the piece of land wider. I'm showing you guys how I fixed it. And I even added an extra rock to it. Nice. Look at that. Alright. Now then. This Picasso tool, I'm going to come in and I'm going to scratch off a tree. 
Now see, I let the paint stay for a little bit. I let it sit for a while so that when you scratch your tree, you're actually mixing some of that paint. And that paint on the bottom, since it's been there, you can't very easily scratch it off. So you get this, these layers of color. See that? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and scratch off another tree right here. And this one will be a broken tree, so it'll show some time on your painting. Okay, go ahead and scratch off another one. Just go up and down. It's like so. Now, we could make this painting an advanced level painting just by adding more detail onto the tree, shadows. But, I want to show you guys this technique of how to create a tree with its colors. And all you're using is this brick castle tool. Alright, so then we're going to come over here. We're going to go ahead and scratch another one. I added a light layer of clear coat, and that keeps your painting pretty moist. So that you're able to scratch and mix paints together. And you know, have have fun with your branches. Just making them quite random. We'll add, yeah, we'll add another one right here. So see, your trees aren't completely white. They have quite a bit of color on them. And that'll give it the effect that there's quite a bit of sunlight shining down on them. Awesome. Alright. Now then, we're going to use a straight edge and we're going to add some colors. This is what I call the tinting technique. See that? I'm adding a little bit of uh, yellow. And a little bit of orange. Great. And a little bit of red. We have to mimic the colors that we used on our sky. Okay. See that? And so all I'm doing is I'm spraying the red onto the spatula which is then bouncing off onto our onto our water nice okay and so this is a technique you guys are going to have to practice a little bit so you don't get too much color onto uh, onto your water now here so I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, white to create the waterline effect. Now, you guys have seen me use this technique quite a bit. I call it the tinting technique. And I'm just going over, over the water, the, our very detailed water, with uh, some colors that we used on the sky. So I am using the, the yellow, the orange, the red. I won't use the brown, but I'll just use the orange, the red, and the yellow. Now we already have some blue in the water. Obviously water is blue in most cases. So we're going to go ahead and leave the blue there and it'll make a nice transition. It'll make the effect uh, of light being reflected off this water. And I call it the tinting technique because when I thought about it, I thought about it like tinting water. You guys have had those uh, food coloring, you know, you tint the water. Well, that's what I think. Um, use this technique, it'll make your water more realistic as it will also reflect colors from up above, from your, from your sky. And uh, as we go on through the show, I'll show you more techniques to create even a, a transparent water effect. Alright, let's continue. Alright, so now we've tinted the water, we've added a little bit of 
uh, water lines to our rocks. So now I'm mixing a little bit of purple and white. And this will be just some, some plant life in the background. So we'll add a little bit right here. Maybe we'll add a few back here. And here I'm just using my sea foam. I find sea foam to be quite useful as it is quite random. Uh, I've used some uh, synthetic sponges before, but they have a pattern to them. Um, I guess the machine that makes them, I, I really don't know how they make them, but they have quite a bit of a pattern. So I like to use the sea sponge. They're a little more expensive, uh, they're natural, but they give you that really um, random effect that you're looking for on, on your plant life, on your trees, on bushes. See that? So I highly recommend it, guys. And so we're going to do the same effect that we did with the tree leaves. We're going to add some random spots here in the background, just kind of making the plant fade into the background. So it gives you the effect that there's more back there. But the light is overpowering it, and it just kind of fades into it. I'm going to add a little bit of black. And this will make my colors a little darker, uh, the purple that we had underneath there. And this is going to give us well, just darker spots on our, on our bushes that we're making here. See that? nice we're gonna do that throughout our painting just so we can have some high some highlights and some darker spots as well and we're gonna add a little bit of black here on some of these areas just like so we're gonna go over it just a few touches See how we created this uh, this bush? It has highlights. It's got a little bit of everything in it. You can always come in here and just add some twigs, scratching some of the paint. Just like so. Let me show you. So we come in, and we'll add a little twig. Maybe there's a little branch here too. Just like so. We'll add a little bit right there. one down here it's up to you guys but see it's the small details that make your painting uh, very realistic so take the time if you guys aren't spray painting live you know, go ahead and take the time to add the smaller details with time you guys will become a lot faster at it here very gently I'm adding a few sprays of white creating the light effect. Just like that. See that? Okay. Well, we want to give the effect that there's light passing through uh, tree leaves. That there's objects in the way. Even some trees. So we're just going to make some random lights as well. Now, do you see how high in the straight edge I'm aiming? Pretty high up there, huh? That way, just a very uh, gentle mist would hit the, the spray paint. The closer you get to the, to the bottom, the stronger the light will be, the brighter. Nice. All right. I'm going to create the light source. Alright then, a little bit of brown and orange. Now see I'm, very, I'm tapping very gently into the brown, so I want more orange than brown. I'm going to create 
leaves that are closer to us. So this will give us some darker leaves. Just like so. We'll add a few right here. Now do you see how I keep tapping off uh, from the painting? It's because I, I feel my sponge has too much paint and I don't want my, my leaves to be that dark. So I tap off in the distance. Okay, if they start getting too light, you add a little more color tone. Okay, just like so. You want to leave some open spaces in between your leaves. Nice. And then afterwards we'll add some highlights to our to our leaves. So we'll add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. Okay. Tear off a piece of your sea sponge. I'm just gonna add some some random spots here. So yellow and white gives us this this really bright yellow. And see, I'm just adding it to the spots where you see the light hitting it. That way, it's obvious that you know these are highlights. This is where the light's hitting it. So we'll add a few over here. a few right here and this is light manipulation add a few right there maybe even a few right here <coughs> see how easy it is just add a few spots here and there where the light is hitting it And that'll make it quite evident. Nice. Alright, now with a little bit of blue and white here on the bottom. See that? I'm just using my straight edge. I'm going to come down and create the waterfall. Now I'm just tinting the water there as well. Using a little bit of red orange some of the colors that we used above and that's how you make a waterfall this is just another technique I'm trying to show you all the different ways of creating um, you know different textures terrains waterfalls that way you guys can see which one fits you better now here I'm tinting the water on the bottom as well. A little bit of orange. I'm gonna add some red afterwards. So <coughs> nice. And there you go. See I made this one a little darker. Now let's go ahead and add the splash from our waterfall. You guys know how to do that. I'm just gonna add some some highlights here to our bottom bottom water. Now then, I'm gonna tear off a piece of magazine. I'm gonna begin creating the terrain on the background. So we're gonna use a little bit of black and brown. I'm going to tear off another piece of magazine. Okay. And check this out. 
let's say you want to create a rock right here well why not just make it don't be afraid of your painting don't be afraid of messing up guys I know it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot easier said than done especially when you put this much time into a painting but uh, experiment with it perhaps not on a painting like this one but do experiment make a and I'll make a tutorial about that maybe just uh, you know a simple painting and just add stuff to it so you know how it works how you can add stuff if you don't feel so confident you know on your skills yet it's okay practice it's the only way you guys will, will get better so I went ahead added a little rock to it With our black, I'm gonna go ahead. I made the silhouette, what I wanted my terrain to look like. And then with the black, I went ahead and covered it. Just makes it a lot easier. I'm just gonna add some some green right and the spray castle tool some green and white I'm just gonna create some some plant life you know just a few little strands of grass and it's important that you get some of that white at the tip you see that that way you'll get darker color on the bottom which is green and you get the white tips at the end And just make them random throughout your painting. Later on, as the show progresses, I will show you how to create um, plants with this with this technique. But first things first, I'll show you the basics. All right, so we'll add a few around this tree. Maybe a few over here. Looks pretty nice, huh? And it doesn't necessarily have to be green and white, it can be other colors. But I think green and white will help balance this painting a little bit. So I'll just add a few colors here and there. Maybe one here. Just like that. Awesome. Okay. You know what? I think we could use a little more plant life on the silhouette here to our left. So we'll just add a little bit of the green and white that we were just using to create those uh, strands of grass. So with our sea sponge, we'll come out, just put a few. Just a, a quick layer. Okay. I think we can also use a little bit of uh, purple and white. That might look pretty nice too. So we'll add a, just a quick layer of that too. Just like so little bit here and there nice you know what else though I think I'd like to add with our spray castle funnel maybe a silhouette layer of of a tree branch maybe a tree trunk just kind of broken down right through here into the water yeah let's add another one over here now we gotta go back into it add some more detail to our tree trunks so we'll just go through and add a few extra branches as you guys can tell I'm a 
really good ventriloquist. Just clean this Picasso funnel over here. <laughs> Make sure we keep our area clean. Throw away any pieces of magazine we don't need. Stick into our hands or anything like that. I was a little undecided if I was going to use the silhouette technique on this painting only because there's so much light you know that black has a tendency to just stand out quite just as bright as the, as the bright colors but um, I really do believe that adding a silhouette uh, of a branch branches in this case will not only give your painting time perspective but a, but a 3D feel to it as well now it'll give it time because you know that this is like a dead tree branch. You know, it's obvious it's tipping over, it's into the water. Uh, perspective, as you know that it's overlapping several layers of our painting, so you know it's closer to you. So it'll give it more dimension to your painting. It's okay to add silhouette, the silhouette technique. All right, well, if you guys are ready, uh, let's continue. All right, crew. And that's what you've created. There's a silhouette of the tree, or the dead branches. See the colors on the on the water reflecting from the sky. It all balances pretty nice. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of clear coat. And I'm gonna sign my name on it. I'm gonna do some that we don't usually do, or you guys don't usually see me doing. Is I'm also gonna add a coat of clear coat on top of the painting and then I'm gonna dry it <laughs> I'll show you guys what I mean let's take another look at our painting nice you see the the highlights on those plants really stand out where the light is hitting them nice all right be very careful when performing this technique guys try and be about six inches away from your painting until next time folks <laughs>